Hi, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to SA Accounting Academy. Uh, here's a short clip on one of our previous webinars. I hope that you really do enjoy it. So it's a bit strange not to have my headset on, but we have got an open mic session today. Um, so thank you so much for joining us. It's the fourth, so I think we're halfway now, almost. Yeah, we've got 11. Wow. Okay. So we're not quite halfway yet. Um, so we're doing the PFMA and Treasury regulations. So this is going to be a bit of a legal, as Bronwyn was saying to me, um, more theory, less chit chat. Um, so it is a bit more of a 10 session and a bit more of a detailed session. But I think it's going to be a good one, um, especially just getting to grips with the actual act. Uh, and I'm sure that we all enjoy the session as it goes on. So just to do the necessary, as always. Um, Please ask questions. Please ask as many questions as you can. We really do enjoy an interactive session. Uh, this is us. So um, as you can see, this is me. Uh, it is not somebody else. I am actually here. I am going to be the peanut gallery in today's session. Um, as you've noticed with this, Bronwyn is definitely the technical expert here, and I am along for the ride. Um, but do enjoy and know that I'm here asking questions and having my, my two bits worth. Uh, this is Bronwyn, and it's who she is about. So enjoy. Have fun. Um, and I do you know that uh, it's going to be something, you know, we do have to go back to the acts. And, and I have to say that I've really been enjoying the series because it makes me stop and look around. So now when I'm engaging with civil servants and public servants and the public sector, um, I'm looking at it with a bit of a different viewpoint because now I know what they're supposed to do and how they're supposed to do it. I know what's expected of them. Uh, and it does mean that we as citizens actually need to start questioning this um, and those of us in practice need to start looking at this and um, I think upping our game. And so I'm really enjoying this training session. I hope that you are as well. On that note, um, you'll notice that uh, we are actually going to dive straight into the material um, and I hope you enjoy it. We will be breaking around about halfway so that we can um, just take a comfort break. Uh, I had somebody very creatively tell me it was a T and P break, as in the letters, um, and I think we all need that. Um, so we will break about on the hour, uh, but yeah, so I'm going to hand over to Bronwyn to get started, and if you've got any questions, please pop them into the chat box. It does make the session more enjoyable for both you and for us, uh, and we look forward to engaging with you further. Thanks, everyone. Cool. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. So by now, I suppose if you've joined us for a few sessions, you'll be used to us, Karen and I, hot spotting um, on the seats. And so now I'm in the hot seat. Okay. So as Karen said, when we were preparing for the session, I said to her, um, this one is going to be a little bit more intense, uh, a little bit more theory and a little bit less chit chat. Although it, it's always interesting when Karen and I present together to have the less chit chat. There are quite a lot of slides to get through today, and today's session is quite a lot more theoretical. And I remember one of our attendees said last week it was quite a, a bombshell of a session or quite a lot of stuff to take in, and I think today might be even more so. So I'm just giving you a warning up front that it is quite technical. So this is session number four, and the three sessions leading up to this have been quite contextual, sort of onboarding into the public sector, um, and it is an 11-session series which covers all aspects of the public sector, and here we're starting to get into the, the legal context for public financial management in the South African public sector context. So the session objectives today really do feed on from establishing the context in the previous sessions. So we're looking at the PFMA today, so the Public Finance Management, Finance Management Act. And in the previous sessions, you would have understood that the South African cycle sort of split government into spheres, and, and we look at the national and provincial government, and then we look at the local government. And so today we're covering the, the first bit, the, sort of the, the starting point of legislation which covers financial management in national and provincial government, and that's the PFMA. And then in the next session, we're going to cover the MFMA, which is the Municipal Finance, Finance Management Act and the related acts that come along with that. And it covers the same kind of financial management in the public sector, but at local government. So we're going to stick with the PFMA today. 
This is the first session on the PFMA. So we're going to do a high-level session on PFMA today and a high-level session on the Treasury regulations. And I've, I've grouped those two things together, not because they are the only thing that is relevant to the PFMA cycle in South Africa, but because they're the starting point. They're like, if you don't know this, then you really actually can't start working in or as an accounting professional, or even as a public servant or as an auditor in the PFMA space. So there's a lot more to the PFMA than what we're covering. It's a high level starting point to developing your understanding. And also, where do I start to find out more? So as accounting professionals, we are committed to lifelong learning. We're committed to research. We know that we need to start somewhere. And that creates a habit of ours to say this opens up our awareness that there's more and our ability to do research and our ability to find out where we need to go uh, to look for more information to develop expertise in certain areas so it's very much a, a starting point session today for pfma so our objectives are what for today's session what, what do we need to understand about what the pfma it's the act itself is trying to achieve how is it structured what can what kinds of information can you find in the pfma itself um, and then how do we identify the sections in the PFMA um, and the responsibilities and requirements relating to financial management? So just on an overall basis, what kind of information and what kind of requirements are included in the PFMA that speak to this concept of financial management, right? So this is not a case of going into the detailed sections and unpacking them because then we really would need more than two hours. But it's, it's highlighting how the structure and the contents of the PFMA aligns to the concepts of financial management that we've already discussed in the previous three sessions. Um, and I know that it looks like three line items, but that's going to take us probably the, the most significant chunk of today's time that we've got. And then we're going to move on to the Treasury regulations, and we're going to kind of do the same thing, right? Why are they there? How, how did they arrive there? Why does Treasury, um, as a government department, really get a chance to regulate anything? Where does it come from? So what is the objective of the Treasury regulations? How are they structured? What's in them? And then enough of a glimpse of the way they're structured that allows you to know where they are, where to find them, and to be able to look at them and navigate around them. Right to be able to, to if somebody says this is in the tre treasury regulations, you should be able to find the treasury regs, open them up, and navigate around them so that you can find what you're looking for. So it's basically, will you be able to use them and find what they're looking for? At the end of the session, I'm not expecting that you'll be able to know off the top of your head and quote exactly what's in there. As I say, that is again, that would be you could quite easily make this a year's worth of study. What we're doing today in two hours, so it's certainly not designed for you to have level expert at the end. But it's enough of awareness to know where to find the stuff, what kind of stuff is in there, and how to be able to work with it as a professional to read it and say, okay, wait, I understand what that is. I understand where to go and get information, and then to identify critical sections of of the treasury regulations the same way that we are able to identify critical sections of the PFMA. So those are what our objection, session objectives are. The program is, is then obviously aligned to that. We're going to uh, recap on the definition of PFM because uh, I want you to see a very, very obvious relationship between the concept of public financial management that we've discussed in the previous sessions and this act and the treasury regulations. I want you to see when we're talking about government, how it actually is structured for fun, for managing public finance in exactly the same way as the cycle that we discussed in the previous sessions about what the cycle of managing public finance is. It's actually embodied in the structures of the laws and regulations that enable PFM in our country. Right. So we're going to recap on the definition. I'm going to just remind you about the differences between PFMA and MFMA. We're going to then talk about the objective of the Act and recap on the cycle. And I'm going to do that before I talk about the PFMA structure so that you can actually see the alignment. And then I'm going to jump to right to the end of the PFMA to talk about the schedules, the back, the annexures to the PFMA. And then before going into some of the useful sections of the PFMA, so the critical sections, that is very useful in understanding how public financial management works in this country. Um, I'm just going to talk about some useful definitions and um, words and jargon that you use in the public sector and is often uh, used in the media when people don't really have a, a technical understanding of what those are. And then we're going to move into some of the important sections. So those are 
what role does the national treasury play in the management of public finance? And what is the national revenue fund? And the same thing for the provincial treasuries and the provincial revenue funds. And then we're going to talk about provincial and national budgeting. And we're going to talk about the actual government structure. So departments, constitutional institutions and public entities. I hope that you enjoyed that video. For more of our webinar videos, go to www.accountingacademy.co.za. Thank you and have a lovely day.